Machines don't do anything. It's like asking whether submarines swim. There are many unanswered questions, even in physics. You could arbitrarily give an answer where you don't know it. Can't do that with language and consciousness. What the computer in front of me is capable of doing is implementing a program. That's it, scanning huge amounts of data, finding statistical regularities, enough so that he can make a fair guess as to what the next word will be in some sequence. It simply shows they're irrelevant. A two-year-old child has basically mastered the essentials of language. You mentioned that ChatGPT, for instance, makes use of a wide, a huge amount of data. So I think this is also known as the poverty of the stimulus. So while AI models can operate with small amounts of data. How do you reconcile the idea of the poverty of the stimulus in human language acquisition with the fact that AI models require vast amounts of data to produce outputs? Simply shows their irrelevance. A two-year-old child, or two, three-year-old child has basically mastered the essentials of language with very sparse data. If we want to understand language learning, cognition. We want to see how that works. The fact that some program that scans extraordinary amounts of data and gets something superficially similar to what a two-year-old child does basically tells us nothing. So I guess you would probably agree with Alan Turing, um, who wrote in his famous 1950 paper uh, about the question of whether machines can think. He wrote, and I quote, this may be too meaningless to deserve discussion. Nevertheless, I believe that at the end of the century, the use of words and general educated opinion will have altered so much that one will be able to speak of machines thinking without expecting to be contradicted. What is your view on Turing's perspective and ChatGPT's capabilities as a form of thinking? Do you think this is just a, a problem of definition? It's like asking whether submarines swim. You want to call that swimming? Okay, submarines swim. What the programs are doing is, again, scanning huge amounts of data, finding statistical regularities, enough so that you can make a fair guess as to what the next word will be in some sequence. Is that thinking? Is submarine swim? It's the same question. One of the reasons, I guess, um, um, of, your, of, of this is, of course, these systems don't have consciousness. What is your opinion on Searle's argument and the idea of weak AI? Do you think machines can ever truly understand language uh, or have genuine consciousness? Or is this something fundamentally different? Uh, there's something fundamentally different about human cognition that can never be replicated by machines. First of all, let's disentangle the terminology. Machines don't do anything. I have a computer in front of me. It's basically a paperweight. It doesn't do anything. What the computer in front of me is capable of doing is implementing a program. That's it. What's a program? Well, a program is a theory written in a notation in which machines can implement. It's a strange kind of theory, the kind that you don't find in the sciences. For a program to function, every question has to be answered. You can't have unanswered questions. It's not like the sciences. There are many unanswered questions, even in physics. You could arbitrarily give an answer where you don't know it. Okay, that would be like a program. So the question is whether this strange kind of theory can be a theory of intelligence of consciousness and so on. Why not? We could have theories of consciousness. These approaches aren't getting anywhere near it, but it's possible for, uh, certainly imaginable, that there'll be a scientific theory of uh, human intelligence. In fact, we know quite a bit about that already. Lots of unanswered questions, but progress. Maybe you can say something about consciousness. If you can, you could program it. If you answer the unanswered questions, you could run it on a computer. There's nothing magical about this. So do we actually know what causes consciousness? Is it the neuron firings in the brain? 
what exactly causes consciousness? We can talk about what causes consciousness. You can find out what kinds of neural structures are involved in conscious experience. It's a scientific problem, not not very easy. Uh, one reason it's a hard problem is that, first of all, the brain is an extremely complex mm. object. Very little is understood about it. The basic models that are used, the neural net models, are probably the wrong models. There's principled reasons to believe that. But another problem is that uh, uh, you can't do experiments with humans for ethical reasons. You can't raise human children in artificial environments. You can't put uh, electrodes into single cells in the cortex to figure out what's going on. Uh, well, that, uh, and we know a lot about human vision, but that's because of invasive experiments with other animals which have about the same visual system that humans do. Can't do that with language and consciousness because there aren't any other organisms. So it's a very hard problem. And the problem is not advanced in the least by complex simulations. They'll tell us nothing. As far as John Searle's argument is concerned, I wasn't particularly impressed by it. The way we use the word think, mm. rooms don't think. Okay, we're back to submarine swimming. It's a point that Wittgenstein made. They said, uh, people think maybe dolls and spirits. That's his aphoristic way of saying, think is a word that we use for what people do, has some open texture. We may apply it to things that are sort of like people, but that's essentially terminology. Nothing's involved.